In today's video, we're making our own custom paw print cookie cutters with our pups' names in them using Canva and CookieCAD. If that's something that interests you, I hope you'll stick around and join me for the fun. So, the first thing we're going to do, if you're not familiar with Canva, is we're going to go on over to canva.com. If you don't have an account, it's going to prompt you to sign up. Uh, since we already have one, we can go ahead and log in. In fact, I already have the Canva app downloaded for my computer, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that up. Typically when you start from home, you're gonna see something like this. Click on logo. That's gonna be the easiest way to get started. And with the free plan, you're limited to downloading 500 by 500 pixels. Anything larger than that will require a paid Canva subscription, which if you use it a lot, I do believe it's worth it. We do pay for it and it definitely is worth every penny. All right, for this one, I wanna do a dog bone cookie cutter. With the holiday season coming up, there's gonna be a lot of custom gifts and uh, dog biscuits with the dog's name on it is a really cool idea. So for this instance, I just searched dog bone and this is a premium image with the Canva Pro plan. So you can scroll through and search for ones that don't have the little premium tag like this one here. And I'm gonna resize it 300 pixels high. So next we can take our text I'm just going to add a simple text box in the middle. And I like to use a font that has some thickness to it. The Chewy font is a favorite of mine, especially for dog bones. So my father has a dog named Titan. And I know my grandmother's planning on making cookies for all of her grandpups. So I'm going to do cookie cutters for her to give to her before Christmas so she can make cookies to give to the pups. That's what it uh, would look like if you decided to use this bone. Now, because I'm a Canva Pro subscriber, I am gonna use the bone that I use on all my other cookie cutters, this one. Once you're done with the design, you're gonna go up to share, JPEG, since it's a smaller file size, and then download. All right, so now I can go into CookieCAD. So to get to CookieCAD, you're gonna go to app.cookiecad.com. And I'll have the link down in the description. And we're going to hit try the beta. And it's going to prompt you over here to log in. So you will need to create an account with CookieCAD. Uh, if you have Gmail or Facebook, you can use that to sign in. So for today's cutter and all the cutters that we make, you're going to need a premium subscription. Fortunately, they do let you use the premium version for two weeks. Uh, and you can donate as little or as much as you want. And zero dollars is an option, so you can get it for free, use it for two weeks. If you like it, you can pay for it, or you can just continue on for free for another two weeks. You just have to keep re-signing up every two weeks. So now that you are inside the CookieCAD software, you're going to click to upload a file, and you'll find your image you saved from Canva, and just hit open. And the first thing it's going to do for me is open it up to Inprint Cutter because that is the last thing that I used. What it will probably open on your screen with is this, just the outline of the bone. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to go over to Imprint Cutter, and I have all the settings saved. And for this instance, we're going to need the floating one. As you can see now, we've got our whole cookie cutter here just the way we want it to look so when we go to stamp it, it comes out nice and perfect now how did i get to this point well let me show you i like these cutters to be around four inches so i'm gonna bump this up to 95 mil just gonna give me a slightly larger cutter i'm gonna change my depth to 12 millimeters with a blade thickness of one millimeter we're gonna make sure sharp blade is turned on and that'll give you this nice chamfered edge at the top here. And I've got a chamfer height of two. The imprint I've got set to be four millimeters down from the top. Handle, which is this part here, has a height of two and a half millimeters and a width coming out of three millimeters. You're gonna wanna make sure center bars is turned on. Without these on, your design is just gonna float there and it won't work very well. So we'll turn on center bars. I like to have both a horizontal and a vertical for these ones. Change these both to seven. Then you're gonna go down to experimental settings and there is an option here 
called under imprint. Right now it's turned off. If it has a floating part like the dot in the eye, you will need to leave under imprint off. For everything else, I would recommend turning under imprint on because it will make the cutter a lot easier to clean. As you can see here, uh, there is a pass through that goes all the way through. You can rinse out the, uh, the cutter when you're done using it. When we turn under imprint off, it closes everything in, which means anything that gets pushed down into there is going to be much harder to get out. So it's up to you whether you use uppercase or lowercase letters, but just know that sometimes they will be floating. Next, you'll hit download and we'll open up Orca Slicer. All right, and I've got my profile for my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini pulled up. Fantastic machine to print these on. So now that we've got our file imported, we can move it around, do whatever we want with it, check the scale, make sure it's gonna be the right height. All right, so we've got our Titan cutter there. I did have to change the layer height to 0.18 for whatever reason. Uh, at 0.2, it's giving me some defects over here for the uh, ironing process. But by changing that to 0.18, it gets rid of it. It only adds three extra minutes. So that is what we're gonna do. As far as my settings for the cookie cutters, you can see what I have here is, uh, under quality. I have ironing turned on. For the A1 Mini, I found that an ironing speed of 17 millimeters per second with an ironing flow of 25% works just great. For my wall generator, I'm using Arachne. We're using four wall loops, four top shell layers four bottom shell layers, and a 20% gyroid infill. The 20% gyroid infill is up to you. You can use whatever infill pattern you like. I've just found that gyroid seems to give the most strength. Under speed, I've lowered the outer wall to 175. The inner wall is at 250. Pretty much everything is at 250 or below. I've got no supports and no brims turned on for this. Again, and the only thing I've really changed as far as layer height is to 0.18. I am gonna go ahead and design a couple more of these for the rest of the dogs in my family. Now that we have everything loaded up into Orca Slicer, I'm gonna hit Slice Plate. It's going to generate the toolpath. Just verify everything looks good before sending it down to the printer. I'm gonna hit Send. And since I've got the other printers idle at the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and put some stamps on my P1P. Not gonna go too in depth into that, but I am gonna use Cookie Cat and I'm just gonna change it to the stamp instead of a cutter. And I'm gonna import these into Orca Slicer under a new project, and I'm gonna use my P1P with the textured build plate. Let's get them sent over to the printer and take a look at what they look like. All right, so we've got a finished set of four cutters here. You can see nice and smooth on the back side, And reverse printed there. Came out wonderful. Nice and sturdy. There's Ginger. There's the Titan. 
and Lex. All right, so I got the four cookie cutters done today. Uh, we got Lex, Ginger, Jovi, and Titan right now. I'm gonna go ahead and print the other three that I had designed so I can get the rest of them off to my grandmother's house so she can make some cookies. All right, so I got all the items we finished up today laid out here right on the A1 Mini. I've got some Play-Doh somewhere from some cookie cutter molds I was making earlier in the year. So I think I'm gonna try these stamps out. Also gonna get the 2024 gift box cookies up onto the Etsy page, so be on the lookout for that. If you are interested in getting your own custom 3D printed cookie cutter and you don't have a 3D printer, I'll have links in the description below to our website and Etsy. And that is where I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or you have something you wanna see in the next video, be sure to leave a comment below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on the next video. All right, folks, take care.